Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for joining us today for our Engineering Technology and Innovation Open Day. Um, we've got electrical, plumbing, building services, and motor vehicle maintenance information for you today. Um, just before I hand over to Mark to, to start the session off, just to let you know, we are recording this today and we will share the links so you can look back. If you've missed anything as we go along, you can look back on that. If you haven't registered um, for our Open Days, um, do do that, there'll be a link going into the chat for you so that we can send the recordings out to you and also just keep you posted on anything um, that you might find of interest about the college. Today, we are using the chat box to take any Q&A. So do pop your uh, questions in as we go through and we'll wait until we get to the end of the presentation then pick up the questions and share those with the team to answer those for you today. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Mark who's gonna start the session to let you know about electrical plumbing and building services. Over to you, Mark. Thanks, Lucy. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to the construction uh, building services area of the School of Technology and Innovation. Um, my name is Mark Mill. I'm the section manager of this uh, facility, and both myself and Amin, uh, my uh, course team leader, uh, will give you a little insight into the departmental activities. Okay. So, within um, construction, we basically do these uh, skill sets which uh, are generally um, found in the construction industry, that's uh, namely plumbing, electrical, and sort of building services, which is a general um, term for covering refrigeration and uh, a little bit of plumbing, a little bit of electrical within those, okay? Uh, what we have uh, within the, um, in the NGTI school, uh, the whole department is split into those three disciplines, which is electrical insulation, building services, and plumbing. Uh, and within that, you can see that we have under the electrical, oh, excuse me, hold on, I've lost the, uh, I've clicked on something there. Just bear with me a second, go back. Yeah, we have the courses of, um, under each of their banners. It's a, a level two diploma in electrical installation. Uh, we do the level three advanced diploma in electrical installation and as an introductory course, we do a level one certificate, which actually contains those three elements I mentioned, the, you know, electrical, plumbing in a very basic level and refrigeration. Um, under the plumbing, we also do level two diploma in plumbing studies and an advanced diploma in plumbing um, at level three. Um, alongside, if you enter a level one certificate in building services, what you can actually uh, move on to is level two. Um, and actually, from the level one certificate, you can actually move either into plumbing or electrical, to be honest with you. There's, there's various routes, which Amal will explain later. But continuing on with the building services route, you can continue to level three. And then you can specialize in uh, one of the various pathways that will take you through HNC to HND. Um, again, Amal will briefly give you a, a quick overview of those slides in, in a moment. So backing up this uh, department, we, this is the structure that you can see in front of you now. We have a head of school. It's a school within the, the college, uh, autonomous to itself. Um, a head of school, there's myself, the section manager. We have a administration staff that surround that, that do all these sort of uh, uh, pupil attendance and things like that. And then under each discipline, we have a course team leader. Um, so for electrical, I mean, is our electrical one, is we, Katiba, uh, is our building services and Martin is our plumbing course team leader. And as you can see underneath these uh, course team leaders, you have the lecturing staff. Okay. So, I mean, I'll pass over to you now. Yeah. And if you wouldn't mind just uh, okay. going through the. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, our aim is to create a choice and opportunity for all students to gain the qualification to progress onto further higher education. For example, if you're coming as a school leaver, you need to have four GCSEs at grade three from the electrical installation level two, and then obviously going to level three. Now, if you don't make those grades, it doesn't mean you can't go into level two. You just go, you're just gonna take another route. For example, if you're doing level one, sitting guild certificate and access to building services, you can then progress onto level two electrical installation if you're gonna go down that route. Same again, if you want to go down, if you don't want to do electrical installation, you go down the BTEC route, level two, level three, level four, level five, and so forth. 
and this the similarity is the same with the plumbing. You'd need the necessary grades to progress to level two, level three, and so forth, and level one, and then going to plumbing. And you can also, provided you gain employment, you can get an apprenticeship. You can go into apprenticeship scheme, but that's only if, if you get an employment, you can go down that route too. Yeah, and, and this is an overview of all the courses that we have plumbing, electrical insulation, and also BTEC, and all the routes that you can take Either way, uh, whether it's level two or level three, you can gain some sort of qualification for whatever you want to do. And coming to, if you want to go into a, like a BTEC course level four higher education, and this is some of the core units that will be covered in the BTEC higher national certification in construction. For example, unit two, construction technology, uh, unit eight, mathematics construction. So these are more advanced learners if they want to progress to level four. And always the same again with level five. And you can also uh, sort of like um, progress into level five from level four, obviously. Okay, in the following slides, I, just to give you an idea of how the um, achievement is um, uh, we've, we've made here at Uxbridge College over the last uh, two, three years. Um, as you can see for electrical installation, progressively each year, on year, we've been well above national average, both for the retention of students and their actual final achievement. Um, that's all the, also the same for the plumbing. Um, again, we're expecting good achievement results uh, actually this year, 2021. So uh, they're, they're following a, a, an upward trend and it's very consistent. So you're guaranteed to get a good uh, um, tuition from, from the college. Same with building services. Again, uh, this year we haven't, put in the achievement for this year but it's all looking very good and I think they've got their finals uh, ceremony um, in, in a month or so's time but it's all, all looking good <clears throat> Thanks Mark yeah uh, yeah. Uh, we, we, we have heavily invested in providing our students with the best latest facilities which simulate systems which are used in the industry among some of the best in the country this will help ensure our students achieve the qualification and are ready for the next step for the for in, in their learning journey. We have specialist tools, equipment which are widely used in industry. For example, going going along the video, you can see some of the level three groups, pipe bend, pipe bending for level two. You've got level three board there, which they uh, do a bit of testing on. And some of the specialist type of boards we have, which is 2391 inspection and testing, coming around the video, which is on your right hand side. And, uh, and obviously you can also, from level two to level three, you can also progress in special subject, for example, 2391 electrical insulation course. And this is one of the boards that we sim simulate, especially with level three learners, that have to do inspection and testing on, which gives them great experience when they go outside. So in the following uh, few slides, here's some photographs of some of our um, current students, actually, level two and level three. Um, who just proudly showing off some of their achievements, uh, pipe bending and uh, dry line boxes and some of the board work they do when they're actually practicing some of the smaller circuits uh, to help aid their understanding. This is what they achieve. And then they move on to final assessments afterwards. So that's uh, electrical installation level two. And here we go with electrical installation level three, some of our students there. Uh, also, with the plumbing and building services, there's some uh, students there practicing the pipe bending skills. Uh, and also on the plumbing and within the building services, there's a small element of electrical that they obviously have to learn, you know. So that, there you have that. And okay, thanks, Mark. Yeah, okay. um, just once again, not only do the students study academically and practically with us, we, can, we also arrange with our partner, partner employees quality industry work placements ranging from one week up to the new, uh, up to a placement for uh, almost a minimum of 45 days. In addition, we also arrange on-site visits, visiting and, and also sometimes bringing in professional speakers so that students can, can while studying, get a real time insight of how their chosen industry functions and where they can imagine themselves, find themselves say in the future. We also arrange virtual work placements due to COVID-19 restrictions with local employers such as Heathrow Airport and construction companies 
to give students a live insight into their, in their chosen industry. So to meet, to meet the continual skills demand within the construction industry, our students are, are, are at our very best, uh, well, uh, are at the best, very best of what they need to, what they need to achieve. So staff do their utmost best to prepare them for a bright future in gaining uh, valuable skills to improve their job prospects. For example, if they want to be electrician, carpenter, and so forth. Yeah. So these are the potential sort of salaries you can gain once you've completed your qualifications at the start end. For example, if you want to go into say project management, the starting salary before you gain experience will be twenty two thousand, and you can potentially earn up to about seventy thousand a year. Um, here's uh, a, a, a slide of one of our students that uh, successfully um, actually uh, completed uh, levels one, two, and three during his time here. He was actually one of my students. I'm very proud of him, Svanzel. Um, he, he was an excellent, hardworking student. And as I say, he started at level one with no prior knowledge of electrical work. And he's gone right the way through the whole system. Um, so, yeah. Well, and we have many students like Fanzel, uh, and it's it's really uh, rewarding from a tutor point of view to actually teach people like himself. Okay, and also Fanzel's not alone. We have many other students, and we like to uh, celebrate their successes at the end of the year. Uh, and we generally have a COVID-19 permitting. Uh, we like to have a little presentation, which we undertake at the local Beck Theatre here, um, you know, just to, you know, acknowledge their, their final achievements. Um, okay, that's me done for now. I'd like to pass over to uh, uh, Motor Vehicle um, and they'll give their presentation to you. I'll just close that off your screen. Okay. Okay, guys, let's just hope I can get my presentation to share with you. There we go. Hopefully. I can't slide show. Okay, can you see it, guys? Can we see this? Uh, can we see the screen? Any feedback? Yes, all, all good. Dermot. We're all good. Thank okay, you. okay. Welcome to Motor Vehicle, um, and uh, I'm going to run through uh, what we've got on offer for you this evening, uh, and um, we'll we'll make a start. Okay. Okay, so welcome to Motor Vehicle. All right, so I'll give a few course details first, give an outline because we run uh, three courses, level one, level two, and new to Uxbridge College, a level three course. But they all are structured in the same way in terms of uh, skills and knowledge. Okay, so I'll focus on the level one, but if, you, if we sort of bear in mind that the level two and the level three will be structured the same, but obviously in degree of um, technical ability as they travel through their motor vehicle journey. Uh, so generally speaking, a few course dates there, you know, we're going to start around about September and we're giving you a progressional route there, level two, employment, apprenticeship, uh, and it, it can vary a little bit like the guys were saying on building services, that there's a choice. You get your level one qualification. Some people are ready for work uh, via the apprenticeship route and some want to stay into um, the, the college and gain their qualifications that way a little longer. And it's all it, quite often it's down to personal choice and uh, uh, ability. It, you know, uh, some of our young learners mature at different rates. Okay, so uh, this will go for all the courses, will require 100% attendance. You know, we don't want you to be late at any time and we want people to wear a uniform. Industry now uh, wants to see people in uniforms, BMW, Mercedes, Vauxhall, Fords. So we need to replicate industry and see our learners looking smart and tidy coming to college. So basically the structure, uh, we're looking at um, four online exams. It, it, it really will depend. If it's a level level two course, it'll be four online exams. If it's a level, uh, a level one course, rather four online exams, a level two course, might be six online exams. 
uh, and a level three course uh, for online exams. It, it, it varies depending on the level of complexity uh, and the duration of the course. And the same with the practical tasks. Okay, so if we if we start off, every every level one, two, or three will have a health and safety unit. That's a mandatory unit. Without this, nobody can work in our workshops. Nobody's going to pass the course. And as I say, that will be the same for our um, building service colleagues. We, we you know just to give you the the units will will mean nothing to a lot of people, but it's just giving you an idea of the type of things that we do. So at level one, they're going to do uh, an introduction to technology, workshop methods, processes. We'll then go on to breaking systems and then they'll finish with like a routine maintenance. So they get to change the oil on a car, learn how to service it, the importance of filling in paperwork. It's their start to becoming a, a mechanic or a technician. OK, so now just a little a little outline, health and safety, you know what? They've got to be safe. They've got to know why why are they wearing steel toed cap boots? You know, uh, what's the importance of these warning signs? We basically want to keep them safe from injury to themselves or others. And you'll just see there's a few visual examples there. OK, so we'll move on. OK, so this is just giving you a, a sample of a level one question. So we've got a sign there. OK, and then the, guy, the, the lads would have a little look at it. They would have been taught what it means, and then um, they would pick an answer. And up the answer will come. Hopefully, most of our guys will get it. Okay, so again, we're going to cover tools. Most of the, most of the guys that are with us, they they, they would have never picked up a spanner, uh, never picked up a scriber, a steel rule, or anything. Wouldn't have used measuring equipment. So they will learn all these skills at level one. And it will be the foundation for the moving on to the high level courses. OK, so just a few visual examples there. We'll obviously at the same time, we'll investigate vehicle body structure, uh, vehicle safety systems. Quite intense. There's quite a lot to cover. But of course, it's just a start. It's just identifying all these systems. And most of the guys that join us, they have a passion uh, with motor vehicles and that that sometimes they may not necessarily be the most academic, but because of their passion for the subject, it drives them forwards. Okay, so we, obviously there's another unit question now. We've taught them about equipment. We'll show them a piece of equipment and they'll, they'll, they'll come up with a, 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 an answer and hopefully they'll get it right. Okay, what part of the car? So again, there's another question there. Uh, a chassis one wants to know what, what part of the car. There'll be a lot of adults that won't know this terminology, but our lads, by the time they finish level one, they'll probably probably put most of us to shame. They'll, they'll know all of these answers. So we're going to the workshop now. So we'll just show you some of our guys working away there, cutting, filing, threading, measuring, all new to them, new skills to them, standing on their feet for anything from four to six hours in a day, uh, and, you know, it's going to be new. It's going to be hard to them, but it's amazing. And they'll be moaning, you oh, know, oh, my arm's aching, this is aching. But these are valuable uh, life skills that they'll learn and, again, will be replicated within industry. Okay, same again. have got the guys there with their correct PPE on, using the pillar drills, things that they would have never done before. And they get to use all of this. And just the same as our guys, again, all modern high-tech equipment so that they they can sort of so, so it's, it's, it's like an engineering tasks that are thrown in to motor vehicle because quite often you need these skills if you get broken studs in an engine broken uh, snap spark plug things like that they need to learn how that they're going to um, overcome these problems you know we might make it a bit of fun they might make something during their fabrication, they make you see a, a picture of a sports car there. There's a sort of a metal boat there. Whatever they make, it's not the object, it's the skills that they use, these transferable skills they use to actually make them. Okay, and you can see that there's a few guys there. They've 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 made a few bits and pieces and they seem quite pleased with themselves. And an important part of it is working with others. Can they work together as a team? 
because once they're out in the workplace, that's going to play a huge part in their life. If they need to be able to get on with other people. So we get people that might have, you know, various issues that make it difficult for them. But we uh, are trained in encouraging them to work together, communicate with others. And um, you'd be surprised how many of these lads, um, you know, would have had perhaps low self-esteem and some social issues and you would never know it to look at them there. Okay, so there you go, carrying on with the range. The guys are using a range of equipment again, joining some uh, plastic together in this, this instance. Again, it's a mandatory unit working with plastics. Uh, and what did they do? They, we, we, we like to recycle things. So one of the guys, we recycle number plates and you can see some lovely examples there. One of them even wrapped, you know, and same again, it's, it's, it's a valuable skill they've learned and transferable skill. So they learn about soldering, circuits, testings, and most of these guys are all level one. So it's a lot of, lot of hard, dedicated work that they're taking on. Okay, so we'll move on. There's the guy's looking quite pleased with himself with the circuit he's made there. You can clearly see that it's lit up and he'll be using a voltmeter now. He'll be given a, a task sheet and the, the task sheet will be saying to him, you know, what type of circuit have you made? Uh, is it parallel? Is it series? What kind of voltage have you got at a certain point? You know, will bulb A still be a light uh, if you you know, do something to the circuit, you know, very various, various little tasks that we set them and it's all part of a learning curve. So the, the break in. So this is leading them on towards level two. Um, you know, they, they've got to identify the complete break-in system. Obviously, very, very important that they're uh, taught about uh, the safety implications within it, because obviously people's lives are at stake when you start talking about breaks. So they learn about all the different tools different type of braking system the different type of brakes shoes drums etc and then same again there'll be questions that they'll get asked questions that they would never have had a chance of answering prior to the learning that they've been given and as i say there's a, there's, there's another example there okay another little example of another question just to just to sort of give you a flavor of how they progress through the course you know i mean most people look at it oh i could work the answer out on that then there'll be a lot of people looking at it and think that's quite hard. And when you bear in mind, these guys are only level one. And of course, they all pass this so they can progress onto the level two. Uh, they manufacture a little bit of brake pipe. They use cutting, special cutting tools, flaring tools, you know, things that they will be doing uh, as part of automotive repairs, MOT failures, etc. Uh, and you can see again, these guys all working on cars. I think there's a lad there looks like he's using a power, uh, an air tool. Yeah, it, it, very good. It's, a, it's amazing how far they come. And then the final one is routine maintenance. So everything gears up to this because everything is about doing a service on a car. So level one, it's going to be a small service. Level two is going to be a full service. And obviously level three would be different altogether when you'd be talking more about um, diagnosing faults uh, and, and uh, you know, potentially road testing cars with faults on and things like that. So, but, but these guys are all working towards that. Same again, what's in it? Obviously, got, they've got to understand the engine. So they'll be getting all that training as they're going through, all the parts, steering, suspension, cooling, lubrication. There's a huge ignition systems, fueling, huge content. But because it's level one, it's just an introduction. What is this? Identify this. Level two, describe how it works. Level three, as I say, you'll be diagnosed certain faults. Okay, so let's move on. And then again, a sample of, of questions. You know, this probably we get used to certain questions that come along. So we, we know exactly what the answers are so we can help them out wherever we can. And, you know, there's something there again, not everyone know, know, knows, knows the information to us in the motor trade. It, it's quite an obvious answer. And to these guys that go forward, it'll be quite obvious to them. So we go on again, another sample question, the four stroke cycle, they all have to learn it. Does everyone know it? You know, maybe not, maybe not, our guys do. Okay, so workshop tasks of the service. So there's, there's a guy draining the oil. There's a young lady doing an inspection there. 
and there's another guy looks like he's tightening up the sump plug okay so further in young joe's doing something there on the left to do with the air filter guy's putting his wheel back on it's all it's, it's all it's all all nice visual things that the guys do they're in, we're, they're encouraged to take pictures as part of their uh, their job car process it's the best evidence that we can show them working on the car uh, and then we, we finally finish with something that they can take through to the rest of their days. Good customer service, good customer care, cleaning, washing a car, something that, you know, that, that hopefully there's lots of mums and dads out there that will be looking forward to them when they learn how to do this properly. Sounds like an easy task, but the amount of youngsters that drop a sponge on a stony, gravelly road and we have to rescue it before they wipe it all over the car. So, you know, there's a, there's a, a good skill that they'll learn there. And then obviously there's a portfolio they've got to fill in. Um, there's exams they've got to pass. You can see there, there's a job card. There's uh, pictures that they've taken. Uh, fantastic evidence. They have to pass the GOLA exams. They have to fill in a health and safety booklet. Uh, without the health and safety, they would never progress through the course. That's something that we instill in them from a, 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 in the early, early part of the course. Uh, and then, fairly new to us, and proudly we'd like to um, put it out there, we are now doing electric vehicle training. So if you look uh, at these three images, we've had one room um, renovated to uh, highlight all the uh, fantastic equipment that the, the college has invested in. And we I'll even go as far as to say uh, that mini down there on the right is a electric mini that the college has just purchased so huge investment going into these guys i mean albeit that the electric vehicle will probably be will be the higher levels they're getting introduction to it maybe at level two but uh, at level three we'll we will be investigating it in a lot more detail and that will also be open to commercial courses as well so all in all a very very good um pathway for the guys level one level two apprenticeships level three ev vehicles and vehicle training okay i think that's me done so um thank you very much thank you i just um we have covered quite a lot and uh we we've kind of um, got to the end of our of our time, but the good news is, gents, you must have given quite a lot of good detail. We haven't had any questions, so clearly the information you've shared and, and it was and it was really great. And just to add to that, the facilities that um, you have seen from the team today, um, obviously all on site at our Uxbridge campus. So hopefully you've had a good flavour of the content of our building services and our motor vehicle courses. If you do have any other questions once we finish the session today, you can head to the website www.uxbridgecollege.ac.uk. Lots of information on there, all of the course information. And if you haven't applied and want to, you can apply straight there as well. And if you do want any other information, you can always call us or drop us an email. The contact details are, are on the website and uh, the team um, from our careers team and our curriculum team will be happy to help you with any choices. So just to say thank you ever so much. Thanks to um, our team here for presenting today and we hope you have a good rest of the evening. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.